that might be a, a good lead. And I, I call Luke Air Force Base. I get a woman lieutenant yes, on the phone and try to be very professional. I said, my husband and I are, are both physicians. We live mountainside in Paradise Valley. And we saw some strange lights in front of South Mountain last night. Do you know what they might have been? And from the get-go, she had an attitude. And she says, well, they didn't come into Luke Air Force Base, and they didn't come out from here, so we had nothing to do with them. I said, well, be that as it may, we did see them. We both saw them, and I did get some on video. Somebody has to know what they were. They were, they were really, really strange. She said, well, you mentioned it was in front of South Mountain. Maybe somebody saw something at the airport, which is in front of South Mountain. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So now it was a mission. I had to find out what this was. I got the FAA on the phone. I, I told him uh, the same thing. And he said, actually, there were three at 8 o'clock. They looked on radar. They didn't show up on radar. The three disappeared. At 8.30, the six popped up. The air traffic controllers at Sky Harbor Airport saw it, saw the same lights, but did not see them on radar. And they've seen flares before. In fact, from their vantage point at the tower, they wouldn't be able to see over the angle of the mountains and see over into the Barry Goldwater Range. After he picked up binoculars to look, it was that unusual. They were six points of light that seemed to be attached to something, but they couldn't see what it was attached to. Slowly moving in synchrony, as he put it, in tandem behind South Mountain. So I said, well, where were they? And there was silence. And finally he says, beats me. Major sighting here on the 13th of March. Weird happenings in the skies of a Phoenix prison. And no one seems to be able to explain what it was. Suddenly six amber orbs in a row, totally equidistant from each other. There are another 10,000 Arizonans who saw the Many same investigators thing. call the, the largest sighting ever. The availability of witnesses was extraordinary. The data speaks for itself. Plus, I have photographs that cannot be explained or denied. But thousands of people saw more than stars in the night sky. The mystery remains unsolved and controversial. Last night, shortly after 8 p.m., hundreds, maybe thousands of Arizonans reported seeing a triangular-shaped object with three distinct lights. People say they saw strange lights all over the state. There was nothing there but blackness and these three amber orbs. The people who saw the lights will say the lights were orange, they were bright, and they were big, and they were like nothing they've ever seen before. And there's been no official explanation. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen in right, my life. Eyewitnesses who saw it say it's like nothing they've ever seen before. On March 13th of 1997, I had left law enforcement, uh, and I pursued uh, uh, private investigations work. And uh, I was happened to be at 27th Avenue Van Buren doing some paperwork. I just would look up every now and then, and I was remember I was writing the writing my report, and I just looked up and something kind of caught my eye, because it seemed just to kind of be floating and just you know just a constant speed, but you know I could nothing that I could associate with. I went outside, it must have been around 10 ish, and I'm looking off towards the north, and kind of coming in directly at me are these three enormous lights, and they are moving incredibly slow. And this really piqued my curiosity. That evening, the um, hospice volunteers and I were out on the patio discussing our patients and discussing the work that we were doing with hospice. And we were so engaged in conversation and looking at each other in the eye that all of a sudden, when somebody in our group said, oh my gosh, what is that up above? We all looked up at the same time and saw this amazing, huge, dark, silent object that appeared to just be right over our heads. It was awesome. I mean, we were telling ourselves not to blink. It was uh, very close to the ground. It was just like floating over the housetops. Pilots tell me when they make the left turn to go towards the Salt River to the north, that the altitude is less than 3,000 feet. The object I saw and my wife saw went under this plane. The first thing that struck me is that they were just in a V-shaped formation. Well, it's at night, and guys wouldn't have been flying in a V-shaped formation, in a VIC. We'd call it a VIC. So they, they would be in a VIC, and then all of a sudden I realized, wow, I don't see any navigation lights or anti-collision lights. 
So now I'm looking at five lights passing overhead silently at a very slow rate. And it also occurred to me that they were flying too slow to stay in the air if it was an aircraft. Many of the witnesses to the March 13th event described a V formation of five lights with two lights trailing. In fact, there were a couple of witnesses that described the two lights docking and undocking onto the array of five lights. Now here we have in Dr. Kitai's photographs a full two months before the Phoenix sighting, we have five lights in a V formation and two trailing lights. So obviously this object was around for a long time before then, just something made it decide that it was going to fly over the entire state on the night of March 13th. We could not see the whole object from front to back, from side to side. It was so big. I would gauge this object to be <sighs> several football fields. I, I mean, like a mile, maybe more than a mile, maybe even two miles. It was huge. And it just kept going over our heads and going and going and going. And it seemed like we could actually just reach up and touch it. It was so low. I like to use the, the old peace sign, you know, stretch it out. But it was something like this. And as it passed, all we could really see was the left wing of the craft as it passed in front of us. That was how low it was as it passed. And as it started to pass in front of us, I put my hand up to where the nose of the craft was, and I took my other arm out to where the end of the wing was, and it was well over 30 inches. And I said to my wife at the time, I said, that's a mile long. The lights did not move relative to each other. Had they been in a formation of separate aircraft, there would have been a slight relative movement, I would have perceived, and they stayed pretty much just locked in position. So I'm pretty sure it was a single aircraft, wider than any other aircraft flying today. It was quite obvious to me this was not a conventional aircraft. As the craft flew overhead, the lights resembled can lights, like you see in the ceiling, so fairly defined as circles in this V-shaped formation, but no harsh glare to them. What struck me was the sheer size of these lights. It was an orangish amber light, and it was so rich and lustrous, it's almost as if the objects seemed to be made, comprised of the light itself, which is strange. But imagine if you could, that light would have material property, the physical property. It was almost as if the orb was crafted out of light. They are absolutely perfect in every aspect of, of you know, every geometrical aspect that could be observed. They uh, were perfectly, uniformly round. They were perfectly, uniformly equidistant. Video doesn't do it justice. In real life, they're huge. They're amber. There's no flaring. They're like a ball. Uh, on the video, they flicker, they're white, uh, they're much smaller. But nonetheless, the formations themselves are, are compelling. When it got directly over my head, and I mean, I'm talking dead center here. I was right underneath this thing. And I look up. It was like there was no filament in this thing. They appear to be in a canister. There was light swimming around in this shape or form. They didn't glare. There was, they did not emit a, like a beam, like a floodlight, like landing light craft light. There seemed to be some depth to them. I noticed it was a triangle shape with three huge lights. And they weren't beaming down like landing lights. They were just big balls of light, but very pretty. They blocked out the stars as they moved. You could not see objects beyond them as they would pass in front of them. In between these lights, though, it did seem somewhat denser. It seemed darker, like there was a shape or form going on there that was holding these things together. It was like looking through water. And if you've ever seen that little wavy motion and so forth, that's what that's like. What absolutely struck me as being eerie beyond belief, the immense size of this thing would have to be controlled by something that had a pretty strong engine just to sustain flight. There was not a buzz, there was not a hum, there was not a jet engine, there was not a prop engine, there was not a jet prop engine. There was absolutely no sound at all. Just three beautiful lights coming towards us 
and uh, it just it seemed to move effortlessly, just glided right over. This was one solid object, one craft, one big large boomerang. Everybody that called me said the same thing. It was huge, it was slow, it was low, it was totally silent. They could see some lights somewhere between five and nine lights on it at any given time. The lights were not like spotlights. They were more like glowing, uh, gaseous globes. What struck me immediately about the Phoenix Lights incident was the sheer number of witnesses. 